there's a division between public opinion and business opinion. Public opinion, if you look at polls, pretty clearly against this. It has been from the start. More than half of people, when asked, say that they're very worried about this law. But as you said in your introduction, business opinion is actually much more sanguine. Uh, business is worried about disruption. It dislikes the fact that Hong Kong's airport and its streets were being disrupted. And so you've seen corporate Hong Kong, if not rallying round, then you know going along with this decision um, in the name of stability rather than democracy. Do you see that uh, the uh, different articles were written specifically to target all of the different actions that we've seen the protesters carry out? For example, terrorism now is if you destroy any of the uh, landmarks uh, like uh, some of the public transportation, uh, MTR being an example, that, that was a definitely featured prominently within the protest action over the past year, where they would go into the uh, MTR station, they would destroy the CCTVs, uh, uh, the turnstiles, and then set alight the entrance of the train stations. I don't think it's been written with very specific crimes in mind. I think if you look at the, the legislation, it's very broad. So it has these four big categories of offense. But basically, you can prosecute whatever you want under those circumstances. There's also a new uh, independent security office staffed by Chinese security personnel that will operate um, with a lot of freedom within Hong Kong with almost no accountability. So I think basically the Chinese authorities or the, the, new, the new security authorities can use this law to do pretty much what they want. The question that business will worry about and also Hong Kong public opinion is how severe will the crackdown now be? The fact that you've had nearly 400 arrests already and an election coming up suggests to me that there will now be a quite severe crackdown and it will leave the democracy protesters in a very difficult position. What position does this put Hong Kong now in terms of relative to uh, the global financial centers of the world and then Hong Kong's position within China and the important cities to the mainland? I think you'll see that Hong Kong becomes less of a global financial center. At the margin, you're going to see some capital, international capital, moving to other financial centers, perhaps to Singapore. Um, you'll see some businesses deciding to move. But as I say, I, I think most business in Hong Kong actually doesn't mind this law that much. It's hoping it's going to be interpreted narrowly. I think what you will see is Hong Kong becoming more of a China-focused financial center. It will be opened up more to the mainland. It will become a greater part of the Pearl River Delta region. Um, and, and so in, in that sense, China will attempt to move in capital into Hong Kong to cushion the blow. But the basic message here is that China has decided that given a, a choice between security and stability and Hong Kong's reputation as an international financial center, it will sacrifice the latter. Um, it will sacrifice the, the reputation in, in favor of stability.